Hello! And welcome to episode 210. And for this video, I've come down to, well, up actually for me, come up to uh, one of my bogey waters that I've never caught from yet. And that's Merrington Cup Fishery up in Shropshire. Or down in Shropshire for you. Down in Shropshire. As you can see, got one of Mufti's buddies, Andy, with us. We've got two adjoining swims, obviously, you know, six foot apart and all that, social distancing. And two swims down to the left, but he's um, too far away from us. We've got Lee. I know many of you have been Hello. asking where's Lee lately. Guess who's back? He is with us. <laughs> hey? Lately. Lately. <laughs> he is with us but he's just too far away because uh, the complex is uh, busy so um, there was only two swims free together so me and Andy have got them and Lee is a bit further down so anyway guys right I'm going to crack on because uh, you, you've got your rods out already haven't you? Yeah. I've still got to do uh, my rods yet so does some at Carpy Happens Let's go fishing. Socially distanced, of course. Well then guys, I'm going to knock up a bit of a, a bait concoction now, ready to uh, put out in a short while. So, because I don't really know what the fish like here, having not re really fishing the place a lot. As I said earlier, it's only my fourth time here. And I've still never caught from this place, so uh, I'm going to make up basically a bit of a, a buffet to um, feed the fish to start off with. So, I've got my boily halves that uh, I knocked up last week that I had over from the last session. And there's probably going to be quite a bit here to last quite a few sessions to come yet. So, uh, we'll put... Three good scoops in. Probably maybe a kilo and a half there, I reckon. some coconut hemp. I've had this sat in my van for I don't know, probably a good few months now. It's one I bought from Angling Direct before the uh, lockdown. Good old Jolly Green Giant. Oh, just got it soaking in some water so it doesn't so it doesn't dry out basically. So i we'll just put one of them in. It's basically just a visual, the corn. And then some flat pellets. Obviously by hinders. So we'll put about... Um, roughly a kilo in, I suppose. easy spod mix so four components in it which is probably a lot more than what I normally put into my spod mixes to be fair but as I said earlier on I don't know what these fish like so I'm basically just gonna go with the kind of the 
the buffet mentality and um, hopefully one component of that baiting strategy will work. Right, let's get some of it out shortly. That's it then guys, mid-afternoon and I am finally fishing. Done the normal thing as I do with uh, longer sessions. Get base camp up first, get comfortable, get organised and then um, you know, get the fishing sorted after. Right, so what's been going on? Uh, so when I first got here, when I was setting up and up, uh, ben, the owner of Merrington, you know, come around doing his rounds and um, said in this swim at 12 wraps out at a particular tree, there's a, a nice plateau that um, comes up that kind of almost half the depth of the rest of the lake, maybe even a third of the depth of the rest of the lake. And uh, showed me what tree to cast to and bang straight away with a marker rod as you saw me earlier on using found it straight away bringing the lead back and it's like bringing the lead back across a brickyard it's, <laughs> it's so gravelly on that plateau so that's a nice little spot 12 wraps so nice and easy to uh, chuck to on that rod i've put a uh, a fluorocarbon D-rig with a dumbbell wafter on that one. And then as we've just seen, the left hand rod has gone down this margin. And that's on the advice of someone who was already fishing here a few swims down when we turned up. He said he had uh, had a couple of fish out the margin, so if someone's catching up the margins, that's good enough for me. So on... Um, that rod, I've got a uh, Ronnie rig with a 12mm pop-up. Both hook baits are yellow. Again, when Ben was doing his rounds, he was saying that um, yellow hook baits seem to be the one at the moment. So, you know, follow the fishery owner's advice and all that. It is only two rods as well, because the fishery is busy. But once they get 10 anglers or more, they only let you use two rods. If there's less than 10 anglers, you are allowed to use three rods here, but um, it's practically a full L, so it's just two rods for this session, guys. Right, anyway, now we are fishing. I'm going to sit back, relax. Thank God the sun's moved around, which is why I look so dark. And, you know, most of you know by now I don't really like the sun, guys, so... Uh, I'm in the shadows at the moment, thank God. Right, 
Time to sit back and chill for a little while now, I think now I'm fishing guys. Well, Lee might be too far away from me and Andy to uh, be sociable guys, but his film is round the corner so we can always zoom in on him with the camera and spy on him, see what he's up to. That's sweet. Wine. Why ain't that spot me in late? <laughs> and there we go. Oh, straight back out. Must have been a fail to open that one. Bosh. And did that one open? I'll wait till it comes back in and, and find out. <laughs> Looks a bit like the Terminator with them shades on. <laughs> oh yeah, that one opened. There we go. That's it. Fill that spawn up, Lee. And send her out again. A little swing forward. Whoosh. Action go! And <laughs> <laughs> right guys, I'm stood behind Andy Swim, being all carpy watching the water. Hi Andy, Hello. most people seem to be spotting but uh, you haven't done that, you've gone for a different approach. Do you want to let the viewers know what you've done? I've just gone quite minimal really. The old put a stringer on both, both rods, everyone's spotting at the same time, it's like... I'm not like fly no. So you thought you'd go old school, go for a yeah. stringer? Yeah, well, I suppose you can only catch one fish at a time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, see what happens. Yeah. If it doesn't work, we'll change it tomorrow. Yeah, that's the, the joy of having four days on the bank. It gives you plenty of time to explore different options, doesn't it? Plenty of time. Everybody, every single one down the bank, side of the bank of this starts spotting now. Must be the set time. What is the time? Half six. Must must be spod time. Well, good evening, guys. And as you can tell, we've more or less kind of lost the light now. It's about half past nine now, so it ain't going to be long before it's properly dark. Obviously, up to now, there's a no fish, but there has been plenty of uh, fish showing out in front of us. If anything, probably more to the left of me, kind of probably down Andy's way, and uh, to the lad that's in between, sort of, you know, to the left of Andy. But, but there have been fish showing. Right, anyway, I'm going to probably chill out here until it gets fully dark and then uh, get me head down for the night. I've, you know, obviously hectic day, you know, long journey, setting up and everything. Always takes it out here the first day, so. Morning guys. Quiet night obviously. Just 
been down and seen Andy from a socially distanced range, of course. And uh, yeah, he's not had anything, and uh, he phoned up Lee, and Lee's not had anything either. So for the three of us, it's a uh, been a quiet night. Don't know about the rest of the lake, love. The lad to my right, I shouted out to him that he had anything in the night and he hasn't, so. Uh, yeah, so it seems like it's been a quiet night all round. But. Seems to be a few people packing up this morning, Tuesday morning today, so uh, yeah, a few people packing up. Weather seems nice and cool at the moment. It's sort of sunny but overcast, so it's nice and cool at the moment, but I believe these clouds are due to depart and make the sun all nice and hot and glary again later on, which doesn't suit me personally at all. Right, anyway, I think I'll just stare at me rod tips for a little while longer and when I feel the time's right I'll wind them in and refresh the baits. I'll put a little bit more bait out around about lunchtime, my normal kind of spod time. Any time between sort of midday and two o'clock. I'm like a lot of people that seems to be on here at the moment where they just seem to spod any time of day. <laughs> Seen a couple of anglers on here. <laughs> that looks like they're trying to create a new plateau to fish on for the amount of bait they've been putting out. Even though they've been catching fish and uh well, that's up to them, isn't it? Oh. Another random spotter. As I said earlier guys, you'll have to tell me what you think in the comments, but I've always tended to keep my spotting time to about between midday to two o'clock in the afternoon, maybe three o'clock at the latest, which I've always felt is kind of the time of day where you're, you're least likely to get your bites. You know, it's warm, the sun's high in the sky, and to me, that is non-bite time, that is the time you put your bait out. But I certainly wouldn't be spotting early in the morning when it's traditionally bite time. What do you guys think? You have to let me know in the comments. Another morning random spot up <laughs> just here. This guy's spotting at the moment. He was piling in spot all yesterday afternoon, all evening, all night. Hasn't caught nothing. Another spod just to top up the pile of bait that's already up there and he hasn't caught nothing. Yeah, why not? Stick some more bait in. <laughs> and guys, thought we'd come and have a quick look at Andy Swint. I'm 
much happening here, mate. <laughs> so if you've done so far with the one rod you have put out? Put, uh, come closer in. I've used my deep ends. The fish seem to be a lot closer in than, than I thought, so... I'm just not sure where to put my second rod. Stick to my spot from yesterday, or... Bring it closer in. A lot of, a lot of people baiting up again, aren't they? Yeah. As we've already seen. <laughs> like you say, there's no point baiting up, you're not catching anything. So. Yeah, and no one's catching anyway, are they? made features. Making a new feature. <laughs> I don't know. Um, another small update, guys. Um, so Ben, the owner, has been around this morning. And his feeling is the fish aren't far off um, wanting to spawn. Out the, the, the fishery after they reopened last week kind of fished its head off but it has slowed up a bit kind of this week now, now we're here which is typical losing their appetite aren't they? yeah so they haven't started yet before anyone starts going oh fishing for spawning fish they haven't started yet but Ben does feel like they're not far off it. A strong, if, strong possibility we're not going to finish the session, isn't there? Mm, and if that happens, then what Ben does, as he does every year, he just shuts the fishery down. Which is fair enough, and if that's what happens, then so be it. There's nothing we can do about it. But he does feel that the fish are, are as Andy said, they're, they've lost their appetite slightly because they're starting to think about a bit of nookie nookie. <laughs> yeah, it's more than what I get, I can tell you. But um you know we'll we'll persevere until either the session ends or we're um or we have to leave one or the other. But um yeah just thought I'd give you that little update guys as to why the fishing seems to be a bit slow. But um you know, it is what it is, you know, we've, he pays you money and he takes your chance. Indeed. Have a quick look at my camera, so I'll, I think it was zoomed in. No, it's got you. How do you zoom out anyway? A little silver knob on the top. Come to land it. How's it go? Get in there. Right in, guys. My very first ever. Merrington fish. There we go guys, what do you reckon to that? And he's just doing some pictures behind my camcorder at the same time. There we go guys, uh, 
right hand rod, 12 wraps out exactly on the plateau as Ben advised me. Uh, fluorocarbon D rig on a dumbbell wafter, Mystic Plum. I'm happy now, guys. Fourth session, and I finally broke me duck gear at Merrington. 20 pounds, two ounces. I'm happy now. Hello, Lily. Hello, Fenwar. From a socially distanced point of view, how are you doing? I'm alright, mate. Blanking. But... Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was quite easy, yeah? <laughs> oh, he's had one. Four trips and he's had one. <laughs> so, uh, how's it going there, mate? What are you up to at the moment? Tell tell the viewers what you're up to. Well, after speaking to the bailiff, basically telling me there's a plateau out there. I think I've found it now. Um, about three, three and a half, maybe five feet. Oh, oh yeah, let's have a little zoom in on that. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's not focus, focusing on a buddy bit of reed that's in the... Oh, there we go. Oh, you've, you've just laid your float down flat. Yeah, I'm putting your rod down. There you go. What, what depth you got there? About three and a half foot. It's a plateau. And it goes down to about four or five foot. Yeah, probably the same as what I got. I was fishing on that plateau in my swim and uh, I think I found four foot deep on top of the plateau. Well, yesterday, all along here, down to peg 11, there was fish just boshing all in front of me. Yeah. So it was stupid not to put a bait on it, so that's what I did. I fished in close, but uh, I'm going to go out now, give it a crack out there. How far out was you when you had yours? Uh, 12 wraps, exactly 12 wraps for the plateau. Yeah. Is that 15 and a half? Well, just under half. But I dragged it back a couple of feet, mm. so yeah. So there you go, guys. If you're ever at Merrington, peg 13. Peg 13, 15 and a half wraps to the plateau. Actually, it's not peg 13, it's peg 12. Peg 12, peg 12 yeah. Yeah. Aiming. It's the old peg 13. yeah, there we go. Aiming towards peg 5, guys. 15 and a half wraps. There you go. Passing on a useful, useful bit of information. Don't normally do that. I was say, <laughs> useful information. Don't hear that very often. Female. Well, they've been arguing with you, has it? No, it's open. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, look. Bit of deja vu of yesterday. I failed to open. She finally opened up for you. She did. Just like the missus on a Saturday night. <laughs> Not when you're married, mate. Hey guys, uh, that was just gone midday now. After I had that fish, I uh, I wound my other rod in. Obviously, been up and seen Lee, see what he's up to, and. Um, but now it is midday, this is what I call the spotting window. 
midday to 2 o'clock p.m., 3 p.m. at the latest, you know, the sun is now high in the sky, albeit behind a few clouds at the moment, but this to me is spot in time, middle of the day, not first thing in the morning, not half past nine at night, like I've seen some people doing here. I mean, that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. Who am I to criticise? Although, that's what I've just done. But, <laughs> but anyway, right, new tactics. For, for the moment, I'm going to um, forget the margin because it hasn't done anything. So I'm going to put both rods out into open water. Obviously, one on the plateau where I had that fish, what, hour ago now. And then I'm going to put the other rod at the same range but off the plateau. So to the bottom of the plateau. Probably going to do four spawns per rod, not 44 again like what I've seen some people doing here, especially when they're not catching fish. Just enough just to entice them in, give them a little bit of feed. Obviously at the moment where they're not far off of spawning, they have gone off the munch so you don't need a lot of bait. Just enough to be in an attractor into your swim and that's it. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, let's crack on with that so I can get the rods back out. Right guys, kind of early afternoon, well I say mid-afternoon now, but um, what I'm going to do is basically just kind of have a bit of a plan to get ahead of myself in case we do have to do the off because it, if on the off chance that the fish might start spawning. So at the moment, you know, I've got all my Different, all my different baits here, all in different buckets. You know, I've got a bucket of hemp, different bucket of hemp, a uh, bucket of boilies, bucket of hemp, bucket of corn, bag of pellets. So I'm thinking, if we do have to do the off, so it's quicker to do the off, rather than having to carry half a dozen different bags and buckets of stuff back to the van, I'm just going to my spot bucket make one big mix up so that that spot bucket is full basically and then later on when I have to go to the van to pick up some uh, barbecue coals at my van I can get rid of all these extra buckets and bags of stuff so basically it's quicker to do the off so I've only carrying one bucket of this made-up mix rather than half a dozen buckets and bags of separate mixes. Does that make sense? So, if I fill this 10-litre bucket right up, that will definitely be enough of a mix to see me through the rest of this session.
and if there is anything left over I can always use it next week when I'm out fishing again so I hope that theory makes sense guys right one bucket of spod mix made enough to last the rest of this session so now I can get rid of all this other rubbish and if the fish do decide to spawn and we got to go it's going to be quicker and easier to go uh, good evening guys it's uh, about 6 o'clock and I'm just getting the rigs refreshed with new baits for the evening I had to wind in my rods anyway because as I said earlier on I've been down to my van now and got rid of all the excess empty buckets and buckets of bait that I had in my swim that I'm not going to use no more so got rid of all them and now I'm back I'm just refreshing yoke baits ready to go out in a few short minutes so while the rigs are out using the older fluorocarbon D-rigs again if you watched my last blog at Aspen where I had that 28 same rig the only slight difference is I had a change of colour of hook baits which was based on the advice of Ben when we got here so Mystic Plum just in yellow and yeah just yeah, the fluorocarbon D-Rig you know incorporating them uh, Gemini booms you know using the the D for a quick change hook system using the uh, quarter D-Rig kickers and before they go out, they're just going to have a little bit of PVA foam nugget to sandwich in the hook. Which is just to make sure, in flight, the hook bait doesn't spin around mid-air, catch on the hook point or anything to that nature. But there we go, two rigs, freshly baited, ready to go out. I'm not going to put any more bait out, um, as I said earlier on I put four spawns per rod, one on the plateau, one off the plateau, no fish have come along, and there's no need for me to put more bait out. So uh, that's that done and dusted, oh, prioritise, sanitise, there we go, I'll tell you what though, if you've got a cut, the old hand sanitizer bloody stings. Let's get the rods out. Socially distant cheers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. <laughs> dilly dilly. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Good evening, guys. Uh, just a evening update. Although there's not a lot to really update you with. Not a lot has happened today. There's not a lot of fish come out from the whole complex. Um, as far as we're aware, I think the one I had this morning, possibly, I think it's the only one that's been caught today. We think. But, yeah, it's been a quiet day. Obviously, since my rods went out, nothing's happened. Since you've done your rods this morning, you haven't touched your rods since redoing it this morning, have you? No, there's nothing. 
touched him. I'm quite happy with them where they are, so sit tight. A few people gone off and a few people come on, haven't they? Yeah. A lot of spotting gone on over uh, <laughs> over yonder. <laughs> yeah. Although, to be fair, he's eased off on the spotting a bit today, hasn't he? But he's moved spots now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, it's all been nice and quiet, so um, I think me and Andy are enjoying a, a socially distanced drink. Once a social, social. Also, I'm not allowed into Andy's swim because that's the rule, you're not allowed to enter another person's swim, so that's why I'm sat here at the edge. And I can sleep tight. <laughs> and a very good morning, people. I've been awoken up by Lee. A very said, happy Lee. Said get down to my swim. I've had one. And well look at that. Yeah, 3310. Absolute chunk. Lift the tail end up a little bit again, Lee. That's it. Yeah. The fucking zoom in. zoom into it. Not bad. Obviously Second session out. First fish. Over the moon. Oh, warm southwesterly blowing, yeah, and there we go. Blowing from the north today, but from the south, well, it looks. There a bit. we go. Zoomed out, guys. Uh, we are. I am far enough away. Social distancing. <sighs> Some water. But yeah, happy days. I'm no longer a blanker. <laughs> no, just a. Exactly. <laughs> One of them. Let's quick more look, and then get some pics and put them back. I think. What's the other side like? Have a, let's have a look at the other side if you're going to lift her again. Yeah. Oh yeah, that side's definitely better. That's that, and let's have a zoom in on that. Oh yeah. 33.10. What, what a what ch first fish to have. What an absolute chunk. And the yeah. fish is big too. Hey. <laughs> right, get some water for it, get some picks, and then put it back, mate. I'll tell you what, guys, if you've never been to Merrington Fishery up here in Shropshire, or down here in Shropshire if you're from way up north, it's definitely worth a visit because it's a stunning little fishery. Yeah, I'd say what roughly. I'm not good with guessing the size of the lakes, but I'd say it's somewhere around about eight, nine, ten acres tops. Well managed, well looked after. So picturesque. Cracking old place. Uh, there's old Lee there through the reeds, just putting his rods back out. Yeah, well worth a visit. I think there's only, I think was it, 18 swims on this lake, so everyone has plenty of water. In the middle of the countryside as well guys, so if you like your peace and quiet. Then this lake offers it all. Right, here we go guys. Number two for the for the wee man. For the carp king. <laughs> yeah, number two, 23-4. Hasn't been out more than what? I'd say five minutes. Just changed to a pink wafter. I was talking to a lad that's just leaving. I didn't even turn my alarms up and he noticed my alarm going. You can see the lights flashing. <laughs> so yeah. Hang on. Second fish. Let's hope there's more. Right, 
Right guys, so at this point in time now, we're pretty much about halfway into our um, planned four day session. Uh, the wind seems to be moving around all the time. This morning the wind was um, got blowing from our right to our left and um, yeah, it seems a few fish were caught last night and this morning, including Lee's of course, and um, they have all been down that end of the lake, so well, if any of you are going to say, why don't you move, we can't. I think everyone who wanted to move has moved and you know, they've done the move really early this morning and kind of uh, either gone down that lake or down down that lake, down that end of the lake. So we've got no options for moving, so we just need to kind of stick with our spots and work them. But saying that, looking at the lake now, the wind has kind of done a bit of a swing round and is now kind of blowing off our backs and across the lake. So it's kind of gone from there. To there. And used to say that the wind ain't going to change again later on and go from there to there and bring the fish back up to our end. So um, we just have to work with what we've got, guys, and hope for the best. What are your thoughts, Andy? <laughs> Stick to the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Options being. What plan's that? Yeah. While they are, you've got a chance. Be patient. Yeah. I think that's all we can do at the moment, and just be patient. Yeah. Just hope, wait for the wind to change directions and bring the fish back up to our end again. Let's hope so. Alright, so what's my plans? Apart from hiding in the shade of this tree to keep cool. It's about half past ten now. I think I'm going to leave it about half an hour with my rods in the water. That'll be about the time I had to fish yesterday. If nothing's happened by eleven o'clock, uh, I'm going to wind my rods in. Going to go and have a shower because, like, there we are midway, two days into this four-day session now. So. Uh, you know, it's been hot, it's been sweaty, so definitely need a shower. When I've had a shower, I'm going to pop up to the local shops, just go and uh, buy a few uh, bits and pieces. Mainly some ice to go in the cool boxes. <laughs> the ice packs that were in the cool boxes were uh, were cold, but they're not no more so just need to uh, put some coldness back into the cool, bo cool boxes for our food and whatnot. And then when I've got back from the shops that's when the rods will go out so... Before I do go up the shops and for a shower I'll, um, I'll put a little bit more bait out. Even though I've not had no more fish you know, I'll just, I'll just top up the spots again with just the same amount of bait I've been doing every day. Four midi spawns per rod, which is, you know, just for a bit more fresh attraction on the spot. So, you know, don't need to overdo it with bait when you haven't been catching. Just a little, just a little refresher. fly around this fishery. I don't know if there's like a, a heliport or a, even a helicopter factory nearby here somewhere, but there seems to be always helicopters flying around here for some reason. Right, so that's the plans guys, and then um, Wait 
for this wind to hopefully change back in our direction. Right then guys, I'm just back from a uh, shit shower shop trip. <laughs> I'm all clean and fresh, but before my rods go back out, I've popped down to Lee Swim, and because he's spawned a couple of fish out, As you do. he's going to show us the uh, lucky rig. Lucky? We must have two lucky rigs then, because they were on different rods. <laughs> anyway, hook length material is Ridge Monkey Soft, 25 pound. I don't know if you can zoom in on that, Chris, at all. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Down to a size four crank hook. Hang on. Hold on that's... a minute. Let me hold that up for you. Hang on. That? Oh, God. That's... I have to zoom in on your face now. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Fish German style, basically. Hook bead, micro swivel, and a wafter soaked in a goo. I've got some in pineapple, some in tiger nut, and as usual with me, some in the pink almond. And so far, I've had one on the tiger and one on the almond. So I don't know which one's working best yet. If you want to say the one, the bigger one, that was on the tiger. Which is the luckiest one? Both lucky, mate. But uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, About yeah. seven, eight inches long, anti tangle sleeve. And there's only one unfortunate thing. Because we can't share things at the moment, unfortunately, I can't pass you top rod hat. Oh, God, I'm so gutted. <laughs> Christ, has anybody seen that hat? <laughs> Ginge. Yeah, yeah, I did see the vlog. But uh, obviously, if you come down to Merrington, it is a barbless rule as well. So make sure you use barbless hooks because Ben will check you at the bailiff. Yeah, and no lead core leaders either. No, no lead core leaders. Normal leaders, okay, just not lead core. That's the one. You got it. Good evening guys, and we are at ten past eight in the evening. Obviously today's been mostly a quiet day guys, I've not really seen anything else going around the lake, I've not heard any other alarms, so pretty much as far as I'm aware all the fish have been caught. All the fish that have been caught today come out at kind of like first light or you know sort of three four hours kind of after first light this morning. So it definitely seems like early morning at the moment is kind of bite time on this on this lake. Uh, 
Just finishing up my barbecue. Had some kofta's and a steak already. Burger and some corn on the cob now. And that would do for me. But yeah, I ain't gonna waffle on too much guys, but um, I haven't touched the rods no more. When I got back from the shops earlier on, the rods went out about two o'clock, just after two o'clock. And I haven't touched them since. And I'm not going to either, so... There's no need. I'm happy with where they, where they are, where I'm fishing. Right, anyway, I'm going to crack on with my barbecue. And hopefully, going into the third night, you might see one of us with the kind of first night bite of this session. Hopefully. Right then guys, fish number two of the session. Third morning of being here. The fishery is a bit slow at the moment due to them not being far off the spawning, but we are slowly picking them up. They're right away. <laughs> This was off the uh, the plateau spot again at 12 wraps out. Uh, give me a funny little scrap. Unfortunately, um, it cutted around to the right and picked up the guy's lines to my right. But, um, thankfully, he done a decent thing and sort of let off enough slack line to um, for me to be able to reel it in properly and once it was netted I just bit my line off to uh, let the guy's lines to my right go free so uh, you know just one of them unfortunate things that happen sometimes but you know fish is a fish <laughs> right let's get her back so I can get the rod back out And guys, so just kind of like looking at the lake after three nights of being on the bank and kind of watching the wind blow in every direction apart from this one. The wind has finally done a 180 and is now blowing in our direction. And as we witnessed yesterday when the wind was kind of hacking down that end of the lake, a majority of the fish that were caught yesterday were caught down that end of the lake and the wind picked up this morning and finally blowing this way so um, hopefully if the fish do what they did yesterday and followed the wind then we should be in for some fish coming back down this end of the lake only just kind of picked up the wind kind of in the last hour or so so um you know give me a chance you know i won't rush the fish just yet <laughs> but uh yeah if they do follow this new direction of wind then hopefully we can get a couple more fish and it'd be nice if andy could get one as well to uh you know just add his contribution to this blog <laughs> Yeah, finally, the wind is in our favour after three days, so fingers crossed for a few more.
social distancing. <laughs> Feels a lot better this one. Right and guys, fish number three for me. So it seems like that wind in, uh, change in wind direction has brought the fish back down our end of the lake. Unfortunately, Andy behind the camera is not capitalising it at the moment because he's got his rods out, haven't you Andy? I have, yeah. Why have you got your rods out? Because I was going to use the on-site <laughs> facilities and then I had to come back. So, uh I'll be fishing again in the oh. hour. So I'll do the photos uh, in a minute, Andy, when the camcorder's out of the way. All right, here we go then. They're getting bigger for me, guys. And better looking as well. There we go. 26 and a half pounds, guys. Left hand rod this time, off the plateau. I'm fishing next to the plateau, kind of at the bottom of the, right at the bottom of the drop off of that plateau. Exactly the same rig, same bait, nothing's different on that side of it. Just, you know, kind of a rod length apart. And uh, yeah, finally happy I've got a, one of the better looking fish. I don't mind commons, but I prefer a nice scaly mirror. Especially when they're getting bigger as well. Your turn next, Andy. Yep. I'll turn it off. Yep. So, Andy. Now we know the fish are moving down this way on the wind. Are you feeling a bit more confident? But at least we know the fish are moving on the wind, so yeah, today's kind of shit or bust, isn't it? That was the words I was looking for. <laughs> I didn't want you getting told off though. How much bait are you putting out? Are you going for it or just a bit just to top up the area? I'm just going to put about six or eight spots out, that's all. Put both, both, oh. both baits, but sort of one either side of it. Oh, right. Kev you it, Tom Maker style. Kev Maker. Kev Maker, Tom Hewitt. <laughs> Works for them, doesn't it? Bait heavy, fish all three rods on the spot. I'll say that's heavy. 
I know, but that's how that's how they fish, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of bait, all three rods on the spot. Can't argue with their results. Hi right, guys, it's just going up for roughly one o'clock in the afternoon now. Sun is obviously more or less at its highest point in the sky. This is what I call now the kind of time of day where you're least likely to get bites. But as I have had a couple of bites this morning, time to uh, put a little bit more bait out. I've obviously had fish munching on the areas now, so uh, I feel confident I can top up my baited spots now without having to worry too much about overdoing it. Right then guys, I'm having a re of my rods, only because I had to wind in anyway to go and use the on-site facilities, but um, with the rods being wound in, obviously I've put fresh up weights on now going into the evening, well it is evening now, it's early evening, so uh, yeah, unless anything happens during this evening, tonight, because we've got to pack up early. This is potentially going to be my last cast of this session. Hopefully it's not, but potentially it is. First rod has already just gone back out. That's the one on the plateau. And this is the one I'm casting just off of the plateau on the bottom of the drop off. Alright guys, I've had a couple of shout out requests, so here we go. Uh, the first shout out request is to Jay Taylor and Rory Baker, and that is from James O'Malley. So, hello Jay Taylor, hello Rory Baker, let's go fishing. And the second one is via Instagram, Instagram name is Northern Wallstar, but Hello Paul, how you doing mate? Let's go fishing. And that is it for shout outs this one guys. Take it easy. Right and guys, as Lee is about 200 yards down the bank and he's not really been in the blog much, I'm going to give him a little phone call. So, oh, got my phone here. Oh, of course I'm zoomed into Lee of course, so let's Give Lily a ring and we'll get a uh... Hello Fennel. Hello Lily. Uh, you like you live on telly, please don't say damn or bugger. Damn bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so just thought we'd get a little update from you. How's it going down there mate? Um Obviously, like wind direction has switched around. You had the fish on you yesterday. You seen any fish on you or anything like that today? No, absolutely nothing, mate. It's just hot, hot, and hot, really, mate. That's why I'm sat in the shade. <laughs> I can't go my bivvy because it's in the sun. 
So <laughs> it's like a cauldron in there. So I am just sitting in the shade now. Uh, um, what is it like in a cauldron exactly? Uh, hot. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, you got any tactics that you're going to update us with for this evening or? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do a recast tonight just before dark, just freshen up my hook baits and that is it till the morning because we're going to be off, well, by the time the rods are coming in and everything, I suppose it would be half nine, ten o'clock, so that'll be it, unless, can I say, unless we have a fish. Indeed, yep, I've practically done the same, my rods aren't being touched now until well, a fish happens or it's time to go home. That's it, just need Andy. I don't want you to catch, I don't particularly care if I catch, but I'd love for Andy to catch. Yep. Okie dokie, right, thank you very much for that little update by telephone, uh, give the viewers a wave and we'll say goodbye to you. Goodbye! <laughs> right, here we go then guys. Not long after we spoke to Lee on the phone, and he's only gone and bagged himself a cheeky, cheeky little fish. <laughs> 23 pound. Uh, really peculiar bite because it lifted the bobbin up, dropped it back down and I thought it was something trailing at first and then it shot off so but yeah out of the blue considering we've had, I've had nothing all night all through the day but hopefully they're starting to feed in the area now so hopefully get a few more okay uh, good evening guys and girls the few of you that might watch me <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're um, just kind of losing the light now. It's it's got nine o'clock, but the sun's dropped down behind the horizon. So I thought I'd say uh, sort of good night, really, before we lose the light completely. Obviously, this is the final night. It's do or die for Andy, and it try and get yep. one. Can't do any more. No, obviously me and Lee have had a good session between us, the three fish each. But be ideal if you could make the hat trick, wouldn't it? Lovely. <laughs> right, guys, I'll leave it there. Hopefully, one of us will see you in the night. So, dilly dilly, and hopefully, southwesterly blowing. <laughs> Good morning, guys, and obviously, during the night. No more fish, but that's it, final morning, as you can see, more or less packed up now. Rods are still out, rods are going to stay out for about another hour and a half yet, because uh, we don't have to actually be off the complex until 11 o'clock, so we're going to wind the rods in about 10 o'clock, that'll give you an hour to get up to the van, get everything put away and on all that malarkey. But this is still an hour and a half, maybe you can even push it to two hours if you're quick at getting your kit away. But yeah, no more fish for um, me, Andy or Lee. But, next lad to my right, don't know him, but if you have a look at the path, he's just packing up as well to uh, do a move. And he has just had the late record mirror out. A fish known as number nine because of the shape of one of its scales. And uh, it just went £42.14, new late record. I'll pop a little picture up in this corner in a minute just so you can have a look at it. But yeah, what an awesome fish. So uh, yeah, well done that lad. But yeah, yeah, all quiet for us. I've had a few bleeps in the night but... That's about it really. 
Right, as I said, still about an hour and a half fishing yet, so could be time for one more fish yet. The wind is still pushing up this end of the lake, so you know there's still every opportunity until them rods come in. Right, fingers crossed for a last minute bite. Hope I can be as lucky as him up there. Right guys, that is it. That is the end of our four day mega session. Mega. Been a good one. Been too I've, bad. I've finally, on the fourth attempt, finally caught here for Merrington and had three. Lee showing off as usual with his uh, three decent fish, including a nice 30. Well done mate, virtual high five. <laughs> And Andy's been nice and consistent as ever and caught nothing for the blogs. Bless him. So, right, like that, I know it's been a long one, guys, because we have been here for four days. But thank you very much for watching this blog. Uh, not sure where I'm going next for my next video, but till then, tight lines. Tight lines, guys. See ya.